Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Oh Shoot. Today is a guest episode, which we love. I am joined by the one and only Miles Levitt, which so many of you guys requested to have him on an episode. Like, I would say probably like 15 people, which is a lot. Like for my podcast, it's a lot. So I got him here. He's here. So Miles, introduce yourself. Um, say hi and tell everyone what you do. Okay. Uh, what's up, you guys? My name is Miles Levitt. I am a photographer and videographer based in Salt Lake, Utah. Um, I love to get creative. I love, I have a very like documentary style storytelling perspective on shooting. Um, I love traveling. I get super inspired by like new locations and just like seeing new color and like culture and shooting in like various of places. Um, I love just like getting out there and shooting so much and getting creative with it. I think kind of like breaking the boundaries of not following any rules of photography is like a big thing I'll talk about. Um, but I just think like find your own version of your art. And I love to just like tell people to like do whatever you want. Like yeah. do, that's whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, it's very evident in your work. I think that's why so many people are like interested in hearing from you because like your work is so unique and honestly, like it tells a story. That's what we're going to talk about later is storytelling. I don't want to yeah. get ahead of myself. Um, but Miles, I would love for you to tell everyone kind of your story, how you got started in photography. Like give me yeah. the Miles yeah. Levitt origin story. Down. Let's go. <laughs> um, okay. So honestly, kind of like, I feel like similar story to a lot of people, but when I was like 12 or 13, um, I came across a camera. I think it was my grandpa's camera. I don't even know. But I just loved shooting, whether it was like landscapes or my dog or like anything I could find. Um, I loved just like the thought of like being able to capture a moment and like stopping it. Um, and so I just shot so much and I um, would make my friends get in front of the camera. I just kept shooting and I started out with like portraits. And then when I was 16, I shot my brother's wedding, which was interesting and so then That's I started like get more into couples like we'll never go and look at those wedding photos they're so <laughs> bad but uh I started getting more into like couples and I just loved the idea of like capturing like two people's like connection with each other and it was just like so cool to me and so I shot so much throughout high school um and then after high school I moved to Hawaii and I lived in Hawaii for like six months which was a dream it was so much fun um and I I honestly just turned that into kind of just like a, I wanted to spend the whole time. I didn't care if I made like any money. I didn't really want to grow. I just wanted, well, I wanted to grow, but like in a way, I just wanted to focus on my creativity and like really working on like what I wanted my style to be like and working with couples and like kind of like transforming from like what I like left out of high school because I wanted to like really improve in those six months. And I would say like, that's really when I found my style and kind of got to the point I was really, really happy with my work. Um, and then when I moved home, I started traveling pretty much like within the next month, I was like constantly traveling. And so the past two years have been insane, but I've been traveling so much and I'll go and shoot with couples like all over and it's so much fun and I love it so much. And it's, this is like a point I remember when I was like 14 and I saw people like traveling so much and I was like, this is like, I want to be, I want to do that. And so I feel like I'm finally at that point. And so it's so cool to like, look back and see how far I've come. And I want to grow like so much more. And so it's cool to just like, that's inspiring to just like keep going. Okay. So let me do the math correctly. Are you 19? I'm 21. Oh, okay. Oh I my like gosh. 21. <laughs> okay. I was about to be like, please, like if you are 19. <laughs> Uh, no, so yeah, I graduated when I was like 18, lived in Hawaii when I was like 19. Oh, okay. In the past few years, I've like traveled. So. Okay. I don't know why that 16 like number stuck in my, yeah, the 16 number stuck in my head. And I was like, is he literally 19? Because I did three plus 16, not. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I got you. I got you. Cool. Nice. So you were running a bus business in high school then? Yeah. So like, I'd say like junior and senior year was like when I was like picking up. Wow. That's, yeah. I love how a lot of people will transform their business based on their stage of life. So like when you're a senior, you shoot seniors and then like people, you know, are getting married. So you do couples. Like it's That's just, so true. yeah, it's just life. 
That's so cool. Okay, so I want to address the elephant in the room before we go any further. And the elephant is my three besties, the oh, Jonas God. Brothers. Oh, dude. So I just wanted to ask, I guess, like, how did you get started with that opportunity of shooting the Jonas Brothers? If anyone listening doesn't know, Miles literally is the Jonas Brothers photographer for their tour, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's crazy. So just like dive into that that's for great. everyone listening. Cause that's what we all, we're all that's here just wonderful. wondering. That's what we clicked on the podcast for. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, actually a really cool story. I, the past few years, like I remember when I lived in Hawaii, I had written, like I'd wrote in, wow. Okay. I wrote down like goals I wanted and I wanted to shoot a concert so bad. I was like, I just think that'd be such a cool opportunity. And I never really made any next steps. I never followed up with that. Um, but at the beginning of this year, Kevin, Kevin Jonas actually found me on Instagram and he DM'd me and we, I like gave him my information. And a few days later we were on a phone call, like talking and he just kind of said like, they wanted to work with me, whatever. They liked my style a lot. And two weeks later, I shot my first show with them. It was the funnest thing ever. And I instantly fell in love with like shooting concerts. And it's just such a unique lighting scenario. It's like, it's just such a different, uh, what's the word? Like, it's such a different style than I was used to. And I think that inspired me even more to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so anyway, so after that, the next week I worked with them and just have worked with them since I did a lot throughout the spring. Um, and then the past two months I've been on tour with them, which has been insane. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's so fun to just like, I've watched them since I was a kid and followed along with them for so long. And so it's never what I ever have thought this opportunity would come up for me, but I'm so, so blessed. And it's been so fun. And like it's so cool to like go from couples and like shooting couples to the next week like I'm shooting concerts and it's just such a fun show to shoot they're incredible they're also sweet and so I'm home for a little bit and then I'll go back and finish the tour with them but the coolest opportunity I love them yeah crazy that's so cool and it just goes to show like literally even the Jonas Brothers use Instagram to find their photographers oh yeah Oh yeah. Like a random reel just showed up on Kevin's feet. I'm like, please. I'm like, how many other people are like seeing our stuff? Like, I've actually thought about that. My biggest fear is like one of my videos popping up on like Justin Bieber's feed <laughs> and actually him swiping past <laughs> and being like, not interested. Like, <laughs> like going past it. No, it's like, like we think we're like so small or like barely anybody's seeing our work, but it's like your work gets out there. Like it's being seen. And so it's like now, like, working with the Jonas Brothers, like how many people are like seeing my work? Like Mm -hmm. it's so insane. Yeah. And honestly, it's such a cool opportunity because now you have this experience and like you can take it wherever you want to. You can keep doing concerts. You can transition into like editorial stuff. You could literally, the world is your oyster miles. You tell them exactly. (laughs) (laughs) No, it it truly is. And it's cool. I've just had so many opportunities come up because of this. And I think it's, I think for a long time, I feel like photographers put themselves in a box. And if you kind of like went out of that, it's like a little abnormal. And it's like, no, you need to stay to your style. And I think the coolest thing is seeing somebody shoot very editorial and then shoot super, super candid. Like, I just think having the mix of that is so like refreshing and really helps me not like get burnt out. And yeah. I, I really do want to like challenge other people to do that is you might be super, super good at portraits. Try like throw a couple in front of the camera, like try that or try like something super editorial. Like I'll always plan like creative shoots and maybe it's super editorial or maybe it's super not editorial. Like, you know what I mean? Like I think yeah. just like, really changing it up can one also help you find your style if you're still trying to find your style, but I don't think your style has to be so nailed down. Like, restricting you like I don't ever think Mm -hmm. it's restricting yeah yeah yeah. that leads perfectly into what I wanted to talk about is kind of like your style what was that process like of you finding your style shooting and editing wise like kind of walk me through how that began um I feel like shooting my shooting style kind of came from my consistency I would shoot like almost when I was in high school I'd shoot like almost every day like I would just whether it's the same person, like I would just challenge myself to 
Like, I think the experience is a very big thing in this community. And I think it really shows how much you've shot. And I think doing it over and over and over just kind of showed me like, oh, I like to do this with my camera settings. I like when my client, when my couple is like in this part of the frame, I like movement. I like slow shutter, whatever it was. Um, I think another thing that inspires my shooting style um, is kind of like movies. And I almost treat it like it is a movie and a scene. And I kind of picture like if I was watching this movie, like what, what scene would be next or where would they be in this? Like how would a director like frame them in this? And I think that's like a big part of my style. Um, I love movement. I just like feel like uh, shoots sometimes I'm all over the place because I'm like <laughs> I'm run around and we're like doing all this stuff but I just want it to be like fun like I want I want them to leave and be like okay that was fun like I like we do that again I don't like people that like dr- well I'm not saying I don't like people but I don't want them to leave my <laughs> shoot like dreading be like oh photos like mm-hmm. not I'm not the photo guy like I don't want to do that like I want it to be fun and I want it to be like a little date night or like an experience And so that's kind of like what I set out my shooting style to be. Mm -hmm. Um, As far as editing, I think film obviously inspires me so much. Movies inspire me. Um, I think colors, like the color of the location inspires me a lot. Um, I'd say, I don't know. I want it to be very natural. I don't want anything to ever feel very forced or like, like I'm like altering the colors a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I love golden, like warm hues. I love blues I love greens I think a lot of people are scared to edit greens or like don't like it and I think greens are like the coolest thing and you can really play with them and they change a lot which can be hard but I think once you get the hang of it it's really fun to mess around with um and yeah I just say like I love my work to be very storytelling very unique um I feel like each shoot is the same but each shoot is very different and Mm -hmm. I like that yeah Yeah. Is that something that you like feel like you discovered one day, just like you sat down and you wrote out, I like greens. I like this. Or is it just something that has like developed over time, like from shooting so much? Yeah. I feel like over time, I feel like Hawaii, I really set out when I lived in Hawaii, really sat down and was like, this is what I want my living experience here to be like. Like I want to learn composition I really want to find my style and I think because it was so green I like fell in love with greens and I felt it's so colorful there so I really like used color to my advantage almost and so I don't think it was like an overnight thing and I don't think honestly it'll ever be for anyone but I think over time it was like oh I like when I bump greens this way or whatever it is Mm -hmm. Um, and I think just slowly and surely I found like oh, I like when I do this to the greens, I like when this happens with another color or whatever it is. And so I think it kind of came more like over time. Um, But I think eventually it was just enough tweaking had been done to I was like, okay, I feel like that's at a good place. And I think each shoot is different. I'll edit differently for each shoot, but I have a very, very simple base preset that kind of just sets sets the ground for what I want it to be. And then Mm -hmm. I'll go in and kind of adjust it towards what that shoot was. Okay. So if you could give like two to three editing tips that have really impacted your work and your photography, what would you say those two to three things are? Um, Oh, that's a good question. Um, One of them, which somebody might try this and absolutely hate it. (laughs) Um, I do things like kind of different, but after I call and like import into Lightroom, all and I've only been doing this for the past two or three months, but I feel like it's very it's changed a lot of my workflow. Um, but I'll go through and all I'll do is crop. So I'll go through every single image. I'm not even looking at the colors. I don't care if it's super warm or overexposed, whatever it is. Um, all I'm focusing on is the composition and how it's set and how it where the couple is, and I'll do different versions of each photos. I'll think like, oh, I definitely want this one in black and white and kind of like mark it. Um, And then that way, when I'm going through the coloring, I'm not focused on the composition. I'm just focused on the colors and the light. Um, And I think normally when I used to edit and do both at the same time, it just kind of like I'd go through a gallery and be like, oh, like I've barely cropped anything. And I like to get it mostly what I want the end result to be in camera. But Mm -hmm. I also think 
for the creative aspect, there's a lot I do to alter the crop or the composition of a photo. And so I think doing this, it challenges me to like look at each photo just for the composition and change it that way versus being like stressed about the colors too. And mm-hmm. I also feel like it's made my editing a lot faster because mm-hmm. I'm doing one thing and then the next, not both at the same time. So I've okay. loved that. And I challenge like people to do that because I've absolutely loved it. Maybe you're going to hate it and don't like it. Don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, another thing is keyboard shortcuts. I don't know if do you use keyboard shortcuts. Oh, oh yeah. Daily. My, my hands don't leave the keyboard. Like, no. <laughs> it is insane how much these keys can do and how many, like the order you click them, what they do, like it's crazy. But I think that has helped my editing like be really fast and very consistent. Um, like I feel like I can look at the keyboard and just, I just know, like I, I've got it memorized now. Mm-hmm. And if you're wanting to learn, I think you can click command question mark and it like pops up with all the keyboard shortcuts oh. when you're in Lightroom. It like shows you. So it's super cool. Um, also last tip I have is, I love making mood boards for shoot and inspo for shoots, but I also like to relook at that before I edit. So I think people get like super inspired before the shoot and I think that's great. But when I'm editing, I also want to be inspired for like color and composition. So I'll spend 10 to 15 minutes before I'm editing gallery, looking through Pinterest or looking through the board I made for that shoot and being like, oh, I really wanted to do one like this where they're separate or whatever and look at that and get inspired before you edit too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I love all of those tips and something that I've been discovering about my audience is a lot of people are really tired of editing. Like people are just over it. And honestly, I'm a little bit over it as well. Um, (laughs) We're all over it. But I think the tips that you gave, like those are things that can really help you just get past that creative block. Like you're so inspired before a shoot, but then when you go to edit, it feels just like, oh, this is so mundane. Like dragged on. Yeah. Yeah. And I think if you can do that, so going and just cropping, I think that's a really inspiring thing because it's like, it's a very artistic, creative process of cropping. Like you're basically piecing together a whole vision of how you want the end result of the shoot to look, you right. know, like grid it out. Yeah. And then if you go and look at the mood board as well, I feel like those are some things that can really spark that, I don't know, creativity or fire in you to keep yeah. going in your editing and not feel so like mundane about it. And it's going to improve your work too. Right. Yeah. And I feel like for the longest time it was like, editing was just the final touch and I kind of dreaded it. And it was just like, it just like felt like a job to do. And I never wanted, like, I love this so much and I don't ever feel like it's worked me. And I didn't, it started to feel like that. And so I think I kind of implemented a lot of different creative things to do to kind of change that. And I feel like it just doing all these things that I talked about almost just makes it feel like more fun and it's like it feels like art and it doesn't feel like a job to do and it's Mm -hmm. still like you're a part of the creative process even though you've already done the shoot you can't change the shoot you're still changing it in a way yeah 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 that's amazing those are like the best three tips I've ever heard in my entire life oh slay (laughs) Uh, (laughs) so I wanted to ask you then about your posing approach um because you know Shooting is one thing, but I think the posing, like the actual subjects in your photos really like impact the end result as well. So I guess I just wanted to ask, like, what is your approach to posing and what are some of your go to poses for couples? Yeah, Um, I feel like for the for a while I've been very just I want them to be able to do whatever they want to do. And I want it to feel like this is them in the photos. Um, I think I pretty much just tell them like a little thing to do very vague so that they can kind of take it in their own perspective and kind of guess what I'm getting at. So I'll kind of prompt my couples and tell them, I mean, have you guys run down by the water, like hug and cut, like cuddle up to each other there. And when the wave comes in, like run back up towards me. And sometimes it's super windy and they hear half of it and they do whatever they want. And it's super fun because it's not, I'm not doing the same exact thing for every single shoot. And I think movement is a really big thing to me and not even just them moving, but me moving all I'm constantly like running around them, um, moving around. And I think that also goes with, I've become very comfortable with light, whether I'm shooting backlit and the next moment I'm shooting direct sun, I've 
really nailed down like what I can change in my camera and I can adjust that really quickly so that I can capture the moment because I want the gallery to show like some, like I want it to be different, not all backlit. And so I like to move around a lot and I like to get different angles. I like to get on the floor. I like to get above them. So I think movement is a big thing with my posing and I like to just have them have fun with it and move around and I'll prompt them throughout the whole show. I'll tell them at the beginning, basically just you guys like, they're always so cute and so I'm like I'm gonna tell you guys what to do but basically just like swaying back and forth with each other when you're ever together just snuggling up to each other kissing each other um and sometimes couples are a little less cuddly and that's totally okay but there's so many different ways you can capture them and so like running or like sitting on the floor together whatever it is I love to just whatever it is add a little bit of movement because even if they are a little more awkward they're more of an awkward couple. It just helps them feel really relaxed. Um, another thing that's not really posing, but that goes along with posing is making them comfortable. And a few things with that is I'd say using their names is because it makes it like creates a trust between you guys. That's if I'm just like, Oh, you, I'm going to have you do this. It's like, feels so just like, they're going to feel like, Oh, we're just another one of his clients. Like it's not a big deal. But I want to be like, oh, Charlie or whatever, like, I'm going to have you do this or tell them what they're doing good. Like, I loved that you did that. Let's do that again. And so I think like complimenting them and boosting them up, like it should be fun for them. And I think that goes into my posing because I want people to feel very, very comfortable in front of the camera. I don't want it to feel awkward or forced. Um, But so lots of movement, lots of like helping them feel super comfortable, I feel like goes into my images. Um, And a few prompts I like. I love creating space between the two. Um, I love having them like run separate or if there's a hallway, have them be on separate sides because in a way I feel like that almost makes them feel closer. That's like kind of confusing, but I just, I think it's always like couples together and cuddling and that's so cute. But I think sometimes having them apart or having them do different things creates such a good story and like such a cool prompt. Mm -hmm. I love doing that. Um, But I love having them like jump into each other's arms, just, get close together. And I love a lot of my prompts wouldn't be the same without the location. I think Mm -hmm. for the longest time I, I did shoots and I'd leave the shoot being like, I could have shot that in my basement. Like you never would have known where they are. Like I didn't use the location to my advantage. And so I think I learned to kind of just really incorporate whether it's trees, I'm using trees in the comp. I almost said competition composition. (laughs) Um, whether you're like you, I just love to use the environment, whether like you're putting a leaf in front of the lens and it's creating like a cool light flare or whatever it is, or you're shooting with water and you're just like getting the waves in it. I think really learning to use the location like changes my prompt so much. That's how mm-hmm. it's that's why I'm not shooting the same thing over and over is because yeah. I'll do this one prompt at a beach and doing a prompt in a building is obviously so different. And so I think yeah. that helps me keep it different and switch it up but mm-hmm. also like I'm used to doing the same things like same prompts right what are some things that you look for when you're looking for a location like what are some indicators like this is a place I want to shoot at um I love having like a lot of space um but it's also fun to like obviously like in home sessions it's like a lot tighter and so that, like that's a little more difficult but I think I'd love to find places that aren't as busy I think if it's super busy it's a little awkward for the couple. I don't like getting my photo taken in front of other people. Um, but so I think lots of space to create. I love color. I love light. Um, whether it's like grass or a big field or bushes or trees or whatever. I love trees. I love the lines. Um, and honestly, I think a big thing is I'll just drive around, say I go to California, I'll drive around looking for spots. And I'm kind of just looking at like leaning lines and the colors and how the rocks come to the beach and oh like I could see them like up on that rock or whatever it is but I think I think colors is a big thing and I think also just like a big open space where we can do a lot of different things Mm -hmm. yeah yeah I love just not feeling restricted I think a lot of the times in the forest when I'm in trees that's when I'm like I feel stuck in here like if there's trees nearby Sure. But I don't know something about open spaces. I do feel like it's really inspiring. It's almost like, um, 
Mm, it feels like a movie. Like I'm trying to think of a movie, but you know what I mean? Like just that feeling of just being in like an open field or like yeah. the beach. It's just like something that we like as humans. I feel like it's just like, it just feels good. feels yeah. creative. The one thing I can think of is the shot from Little Woman where they're like up on the field. It's like yes. the scene everybody talks yes. about. But it's just like, just like that, like seeing all the space, like it just makes me want them to like run and like lay on the floor and cuddle up. And it's just like, I feel like space is like a very inspiring thing, which you mm-hmm. wouldn't normally think of, but yeah. 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 When you're shooting couples, what lenses do you find yourself leaning towards? Like what are your go-tos? Um, so I have one, one setup and I use it for every single thing. And Perfect. I do on a camera <laughs> six, but my lens is a 24 to 70. And okay. for the longest time I used a 35 millimeter and I loved that. I loved the fixed lens. And I think since I couldn't zoom in, it made me move around a lot more. Um, but I think since I got my 24 to 70, it's so fun because I can like, I'm literally cropping in camera. Like it's so cool to like zoom in and I love getting close to my couples. But by doing that, I love to be farther and zoom in rather than coming up and just using the 24 focal length because I think it distorts them a lot and I think there's so much more depth when I scoop back and zoom in um but the 24 to 70 lens I could not recommend more it's insane um Mm -hmm. I use photo and video I I love it and I feel like it has such good color such good like depth and crispness to the photo Mm -hmm. I think but okay I've been on the edge of getting a 24 to 70 um I don't know if you are you using the there's like a Canon lens that has like f 2.0, but it's like a 24 to 70 or something like that. That's like the 28 to 70. And it's the biggest thing I've ever seen. I don't know how oh. anybody ever holds that. Oh and it, that's the one thing I was sad about is I lost like my 1.2 or whatever the F stop was on my 35. But yeah. I feel like I've gone to work with the 2.8. I think mm-hmm. it would, would be nice to have like a 50 with like a 1.2 for those really, really crisp shots. But mm-hmm. I feel like I've learned to like the 2.8 in darkest, darker scenarios. I do wish it went a little lower, mm-hmm. but that's the difference between, I think the 28 to 70 and the 24 to 70. Okay. The 28 to 70 is massive. And I don't know how people hold that on a wedding day. Yeah. Um, yeah. I get that. I I love the idea, like you said, of just like zooming yeah. Um, and then also having the capability to get wider as well. I think that's like a really big advantage. Even like if you have two cameras like on your body, let's say like a 35 and a 85, I yeah. feel like even that quick like movement is like distracting enough to a couple yeah. to where maybe they might get out of the pose or just get distracted yeah. by it. Whereas you can just quickly just yeah. stealthily. I feel like sometimes it's like there's such a cute moment and then it's like they finish and it's like, oh, like, this is so awkward. They're not going to do that again. So it's like having that, like, if they like all of a sudden somebody, something like barely comes in front of the lens, I can zoom in to like get it out. And so it's so nice to be able to just like zone in on them. Mm -hmm. So kind of the last thing I want to talk about with this topic, um, I, are there any like techniques or things that you do that kind of like impact your storytelling or like things that you haven't mentioned that you feel like really, impact the story that you're telling when you're taking photos um yeah I feel like one thing one thing in post shooting and editing is I feel like the way you showcase your photos is so important I think if I just handed my photos to somebody else and had them post on Instagram for me I don't know if I'd even be called a storytelling photographer. Like I feel like the way I put it together and like, I want people to go through my posts and go through Pinterest and see my photos in a way that tells the story along with each photo. So I want each photo to be super impactful, but I want it to all 10 photos to add up to something. So I like to the first photo, like be one of the first few moments and then the next photo is them like running to the next moment. And so I feel like the way you showcase your photos, I just think, spend five extra minutes putting together your post rather than just throwing it together. And I think that'll, you'll really see some differences in your storytelling aspect. Um, a tip for shooting. I feel like, like I said, is I love to get a lot of different angles. I want to capture the whole moment. I never want like a couple to open their gallery and it looks so similar. I like to put it together where it looks like we spent a whole day together. Like I want it to be very, very different. And I want, 
I think along with storytelling, if, if you watch movies and kind of watch films, there's a lot of different angles. And I think I used to shoot eye level the whole shoe and just in front of them, I'd say the same feet away. It was very, very repetitive. And I think after watching so many films and watching movies or looking at movie stills on Pinterest or whatever, I think I noticed there's just so much diversity and there's so much like somebody's on the ground, it's below them or it's above them or it's them running or it's like a super, super far shot where they look like ants or it's like a super close up. And I think when I started really, really getting that diversity is when I noticed like, okay, like this feels like a story, like you're capturing each moment. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. That's amazing. Um, I'm just over here, like soaking it in, to be honest. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah, let's go. I really feel like storytelling is something that I need to work on. So I'm really glad that you're deep diving into this because it's just like, I do feel like it can get so repetitive and boring for yeah. you and the client. If you're not really focused on honestly, just like being an artist about it. You know what I mean? hundred percent. Yes. Like, cause I'm speaking to you and I'm like, I can't, I feel like you are describing this in like an artist way. And I don't know if people would say the same thing about me because I feel like I'm not necessarily approaching it this way, but I want to, I'm really inspired. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that is a huge thing. I think like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people take it as like, this is just like a job. I'm here for the money. But I think honestly, going along with how I found my style, I think what made me fall in love with my style is loving my artwork. And I think I just, I don't know. I love to call them like couples rather than like clients or it's like artwork. Like it just feels more fun and creative. And mm -hmm. I think I talked about this in my stories like a few weeks ago, but I think what makes a good photographer is an artist or I think what makes a good artist is an artist who is absolutely in love with their work. And for the longest time I wasn't, and I wasn't as happy with it. And I thought it was cool and creative, but I never was like, wow, like I love my artwork. Like I want it to feel like, and so I feel like now that I've been to that point, it's just so much like enjoyable. Like I'm never getting burnt out and I never want to stop because it's like, it's so fun. And it's like, I love my artwork rather than like, oh, that was a fun project or like they, they were a fun client. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that mindset shift is what like makes it so much fun and like so much more like relaxed and not repetitive. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, I can tell like it, even how you're talking about these things, it's like, I can tell that you're actually really passionate about what you're doing and you've kind of beat the burnout a little bit. Like you, yeah. you saw I'm burning out, I'm bored and yeah. you kind of like went and did something about it, which I think yeah. is really cool. Thank you. So let's talk about concerts and events, um, yeah. which is a little bit of a shift. I feel like, it's so different from couples. So I think it's really cool that you're kind of getting the experience with both of these things. Um, so let me ask you, like, I guess for someone listening that maybe wants to get into events and concerts, yeah. what advice would you give them for getting started or getting their portfolio built up? Just any, any piece of advice you could give yeah. that listener. Obviously I had a very different way of getting into this industry. And so I might not be the biggest help, but from being in it and shooting, I feel like there is a lot of opportunities out there more than we'll think. And I think for people wanting to start shooting concerts, I would say just like find a local venue and try to like work for them. You don't even have to work for an artist, um, work for the venue or shoot events to have that portfolio. And I think that's the number one thing is when they saw my work, I didn't really have a concert concert portfolio, but I had a big enough portfolio that they were like, th they got the idea, they got the mm -hmm. style. And so I think there's a lot of opportunities out there to just start working with venues or opportunities to maybe there is a really small band in your area or a small artist start, whether it's not even a concert, like just shoot with them to like get connected in that community. Mm -hmm. And I think even with shooting, like with a venue, I've had so many opportunities with that venue pop up or with working with artists, I've had other artists like reach out and stuff. And so mm -hmm. I think, I think there's a lot more opportunities than we think. Um, and just starting, like, I think for the longest time people will be like, Oh, like that's a dream of mine. Like I did. And I think just, just start shooting and get into that as soon as you can, because you'll grow like so fast. Mm -hmm. When you're shooting, 
concerts, what gear are you using? Are you still using the 24 to 70? Still using the same setup. I use it for everything. I actually, I rented a, I don't even know what it was, like an eight millimeter to 15 millimeter lens. I really okay. wanted to try fish fisheye lens because um, I never would have done that with couples. But I used it for the beginning of the tour and it was so much fun. It was a little hard on stage because they had to be really, really close to me for it to work out. But mm. we got enough shots. But for the most part, I use the 24 to 70 with my R6. Yeah. Okay, cool. I love that you're just, it's so versatile for you and that you're able to just kind of like pop around and use the same lens, but it just yeah. serves so many purposes. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, okay. So I wanted to ask like, cause concerts to me and events are very high stress. So very. like, yeah. What tips would you have for someone that's shooting in like a high stress environment? Like what are some things that you do to kind of like manage that level of chaos and yeah. like, but still capturing it? Right. Um, yeah, I think, It is very high stress and things happen once and they happen very fast. And so it's not like you can redo something like at a shoot. Um, I think the first thing I can think of is knowing your camera and knowing your gear. I never am looking at my camera, looking down at my camera for more than five seconds. I have it customized. Like I've gone through and kind of figure out where I like my settings. And so the most I'm changing is like the shutter speed. Um, But I think, if you're fiddling out with your camera, you're going to miss a lot on stage. Um, I think a second thing is overshooting. I overshoot a lot, but at least I am getting the content. So I'm saying, I think just get as much as you can. You can always not save photos or you don't have to edit all of them, but that way you're like getting the moment. I shoot on high speed the whole show. I probably leave a show with 6,000 photos and that's all <laughs> I know, but at least I'm like getting every single shot that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And another thing is I think just realizing like you can't really control anything that happens. Um, if you miss a moment, you miss a moment. If I think just like paying attention, being aware, like sometimes when I first started shooting, I kind of lose track of the three brothers and one of them would be at the next stage. So it's like, just be aware of like every where they're moving and we'll kind of like see each other and they'll like come up to me for a shot. And so I think knowing the artist is super fun and like maybe even before the event, like talking with them or if it's not even a, a, a artist, just like whoever you're shooting, like talking with them and like making a good communication with them. So they know, like they can see where you are and like help you get the shot. Mm-hmm. Um, but also just like understanding like a lot, like so much goes on during a show. And so you're just like, you're just there to like capture what happens. And I think with my storytelling aspect, I try to get more like storytelling and try to get a lot of the fans and in, in that, because that's such a big part of their lives. And so I think just, I don't know, it is very high stress, but I think Mm -hmm. just like knowing your camera, knowing exactly what you want. I'll look at inspo before shows. I'll find a lot of concert photographers that I love, which has been fun because I never really followed along with concert photographers. Mm -hmm. Um, It's fun to see that and see that difference. And I love getting creative with like backstage stuff, but I like to kind of do more of my creative aspect when it's not high stress, like backstage or in the dressing rooms or whatever it is, because I know I can't really control what happens out on the stage, Mm -hmm. but you just kind of got to go with the flow. You got to know that things happen and you'll miss a shot, but it's okay. Yeah. 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 So let's talk about like what it's like to actually tour with them. Like, do you have to deliver photos right away? Like what does that look like after you're done? Yeah. So I don't really know what, it's not like they like require anything. I just, the first time I worked with them that night, I went home so excited to edit that I got them the photos by the next morning. And so I've Mm -hmm. always kind of like kept that. So tours insane and it's so fun, but so I'll usually shoot a show and then go back to the tour bus import. I'll call right then Um, I'll usually end up with like three to 400 photos and I'll start editing that night. I'll usually end up falling asleep while editing and I'll wake (laughs) up usually seven and seven, eight in the morning, um, and kind of finish the gallery. So I'd say it takes me about three to four hours to edit the photos. Um, but I'll sometimes like once I finish them, throw them into Photoshop and like do some fun Photoshop creations i don't even know what it's called but yeah and that's something i wasn't used to with couples because i've never done that but Mm -hmm. i've 
learned to do like I've learned a ton of things in Photoshop that has like gone along with my tour photography and Ooh. um it's been like super cool because it's a new outlet I never really used Photoshop before but mm -hmm. um yeah so pretty much I'm getting them the photos by the next day and they post mm -hmm. but it's on it like it sounds really stressful and it is but it's also so <laughs> nice to like come off of tour and come home and be like, Oh, I have nothing to edit. Like I'm done. Like, it's not mm. like I'm like overloaded with so many shows it's by the next. So it's usually show day off day, show day off day. And mm -hmm. so I have the rest of the day to kind of hang out and do whatever. And then the next day it's, it's go time again, but yeah. so it's cool. And it's, it, I've gotten, it's so helpful that I've gotten so quick at editing and so used to my camera. And it's so nice that I have that because I think if I didn't, it took me a lot longer to get them the photos. And I think mm -hmm. it's nice to have the photos from the night before and be able to post and share. And obviously they're very active on Instagram and need yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's a huge part of your business too, is like the sooner you can get them the photos, the sooner they post them. And like the more you're going to grow as well because they do right. tag you and stuff. So, I mean, it's only to your benefit to get those photos out, yeah. even right. though you're tired. <laughs> I know we, we gotta, you gotta keep going. There's never the show. The show must go on. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Well, I asked my followers some questions that they wanted to ask you since everyone was so obsessed with having you on the podcast. I was like, you guys got to do your part, get some questions in uh, here. So get out of here while you can. Yes, exactly. So um, we have a few questions that we're going to go through. Um, so this first question, um, how do you get that vintage like film inspired look? It's very vague, but um, just kind of like, I don't know. Yeah, how do you get it? How do you get it? <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like a few different ways. I feel like um, in my camera, I've um, altered the colors a lot. I think sometimes people might not know you can do that, but there's like a color graph and I change that for every shoe. I have it set to like what I like. And I think that pulls more film colors than you'd think. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can do a lot with that. And then in editing, I would say play with the shadows. Um, I like to bring up my shadows in the tone curve. I like to add colors into the shadows. Sometimes I think when, I don't know, I think I watched my favorite films and I watched my favorite movies and kind of saw like things I noticed as I saw, they weren't overexposed. They were very like dim in a way, um, which retained a lot of the color, mm -hmm. they were very colorful. They were very warm and they didn't completely pull out greens and blues. So that's mm -hmm. like exactly what I took. And I took it to my editing and I really want to show that. Um, so I think to get that vintage film look, I would say play with the shadows, play with your camera. I love grain. I love mm -hmm. grain. And yeah. I think it's a big thing for film. Uh, look at your fav favorite film stock, fa favorite film roles and find color from that and see what you like. I found it was very warm. So I have very warm artwork and mm -hmm. I think a lot of time I muted blue for the longest time I would never edit with blue and now I absolutely love blue and so I think getting comfortable with all the colors will help you find that vintage film look and I think just like playing around with it I think a lot of times we're scared of settings I never touched the tone curve for the longest time still a little scared of it but I've learned to like <laughs> play with it more mm -hmm. and I think that gets more of the vintage film look a lot in the tone curve yes the colors yeah, absolutely. And something that you notice in film, like the blacks are almost always green. Like yeah. you're saying, like the shadows, like you have to add green, honestly, yeah. to a lot of areas in your photos. Yeah. too. I think yeah. green and blue are like the number one that I do. Mm -hmm. Do you shoot on film ever? I shoot it for fun. I tried implementing it into my work, for, but it's like so it's it's hard to get a grasp of kind of <laughs> and I like that I could see my photos right away and see what I wanted to change so it's mm -hmm. it's fun and I follow so many people so many of my friends shoot film and I'll shoot it for my personal life but it's it's messy and it's not the best film you've ever seen so I'm like I'll, I'll say to like editing just like film and not shooting yeah you do shoot film I have uh not for couples I like <laughs> I <ha> <laughs> Yeah, I have like a manual film camera, but what I found is I love control yeah. and I feel like I don't have control with film. Yeah, you're like same. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, the way I just have to wait to see these 36 photos kills me. Like, yeah, you know, they're coming back. Half the time they come up 
lack I'm like okay I can't do this I don't know how to how do people do this literally and it's like I couldn't even load my film roll like I, I was like am I exposing this to the oh. light did I make them go bad like the, the whole thing exposed I'm like holding it. I'm like what am I supposed to do with this like right and it's like I just did a whole couple session like yeah. what it's all white it's, like <laughs> it's really like you have to learn a lot and honestly props to people who do because there's some really good film photographers out there couldn't be me (laughs) no could not be me either okay I'm glad (laughs) so the next question this person asked how is it having friends with the same photography style does it feel like competition oh I love this question I love it so much I think it's so (laughs) fun and we all we all send inspo to each other we all are inspired by a lot of the same things and I think we still have a lot of differences but it's fun to I don't know I think some people might not have as many friends in the photography business and I think it's just fun like I love going to coffee shops and all working together and I just think it's we all get inspired and I don't think it's ever a competition I don't think we any of us think it's a competition I think we all love art and I think we all are artists in our own different way and I think we are similar and I love that and didn't mute my phone sorry about that (laughs) and I think I don't think it's a competition I think it's really cool and I Honestly, I think the community is amazing. And I think finding friends with your style or finding photographer friends is a really big thing. And it's so much fun. And Mm -hmm. it's fun to have them there because it's like, I'll leave a shoot and call them and be like, this shoot I just did was so fun. Like the couple was so cute, whatever it is. And it's so fun to like have that relationship with each of them and be able to have that. Mm-hmm. yeah no that's a really cool way to look at it it's and it's like you can refer p- like people to them like it's yeah, just all the time yeah it's honestly more a mindset thing yeah that's really cool so the next question how do you keep each shoe authentic to both your style and your clients I like that um I feel like okay my brain literally just lost. I'm going to need to repeat that question. Yeah. Well, it's, it's kind of worded funny. How do you keep each shoe authentic to both your style and your clients? I feel like I'm okay with each shoot being different, but I have the coloring and I have my shooting style to where it always will feel the same. Mm -hmm. So I think to keep it authentic to the couple, I, I don't ever want to be like, you're wearing this, we're going this place, we're doing this. I want them to be a part of the creative aspect. And I know they know I've obviously done a lot more shoots than them and they want me to take the creative reins of the shoot. But I love being like, send me photos of your outfits or I want you guys to feel like this. Like, do you want mountains? Do you want beach? Do you want it? At the, like at the end of the day, it's it's their photos. It's their It's them in the photos. It's their memory. And so I want them to feel like that. I don't want them to feel like, they're just working with me and it's my, I, I, it's just as much theirs as it is mine. Mm-hmm. And I think keeping that mindset keeps it very authentic with them and they feel like it is their photos. And I think not the couples. What was the first part of it? Um, how do shoe? you keep each shoe authentic to both your style and your clients? Yeah. And so, yeah, I feel like that goes along with my style as I, I like each one to be different, but I'll find myself doing the same things in editing and same things in shooting mm-hmm. that make it the same, but make the physical couple and the shoot different. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's like the concept, every couple is different. Like every right. person is different. So you're just kind of capturing it in your style, but like how they express themselves, how they like to do your fun little poses and your prompts, that's going right. to be different and that's going right. to feel like them. So yeah. amazing. Yeah. What's the most challenging part of your job and the most enjoyable part of your job? Oh, um, most challenging. I feel like, okay, this is, this is going to answer both of them. Okay. I'll start with enjoyable. Most enjoyable is traveling. It's a blessing. It is so fun to go to so many places. And honestly, sometimes it's places I never would have gone. Like I went to Alaska and no Ooh. offense to Alaska, but I never would have thought to go to Alaska and it was the coolest trip ever. And so I think it's fun because it's so many like little places that aren't the basic like bucket list locations are so beautiful. And I think people are like, oh, like my wedding wasn't in this. Like people will reach out and be like, I know my wedding's not this dream wedding in Lake Como, but like 
would you still be want to do it? I'm like, of course I want to do it. Like it's in this beautiful little town in California or whatever it is. And I think finding the beauty in like the little things is so enjoyable. And Mm -hmm. I've traveled a lot this past year. I don't think I've been home for more than like four or five days since March. Like it's been insane, but it's been so fun. Like I've been across the map and it's so fun to like, like I have a little list on my phone of like, I want to go to all the 50 States and I have like 10 left and it's like crazy. And it's like, I want to go to all these countries. And so like making goals and it's so cool and it's so like rewarding to be able to like check off all these things I've always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Um, Most challenging is going to be the same thing as traveling because (laughs) I think for the longest time I was like, that is such a, like people travel and it's like their life is so easy and it's like, they have such I don't know. And it's like, yes, they're from time to time, I'm being paid to travel. And that is amazing. But I don't think people, once I've got to this point, and I'm traveling a lot, I don't think people realize how much it takes a toll on your body and your mind. Um, I lose a lot of sleep from traveling. I early flights or I just think it's a lot of work. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. And I'm so, so grateful I get to travel. I would never trade it for anything, but I would say it's very challenging on your body. I have a lot of back issues probably (laughs) because of it and like sleep and stuff and hotel beds usually aren't the comfiest, but it's so fun, obviously, but that is a little bit of challenges finding a good balance. And it's hard being away from home. Um, I love my family. I'm really close with them and my friends, and it's kind of sad to see them do stuff without me or Mm -hmm. whatever. But It's so cool to meet others in different places. I feel like I have friends all over and it's so cool to be able to say, I can go to South Carolina and stay with friends. Like that's the coolest thing ever. And so it goes both ways. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that actually leads perfectly into my next question. How do you get your destination bookings? Like how did this even, like how, how did it even start? Like if you're wanting to start traveling, I feel like for me is when I moved to Hawaii, it showed my followers that I was willing to leave my hometown. Mm -hmm. Um, I, my family would travel a lot and I would post about it. I'd post like, Oh, like me going to California or whatever it is. And I think if you're never showing that you're traveling, you're always in your little hometown, nobody's going to book you for an Italy wedding. And so Mm -hmm. I think make that investment on your own to start traveling and then it'll completely pay off. Um, I went to Europe, I think first time I'd ever left the country in 2021, January, 2021, I went to London and Paris and I didn't even shoot, but I posted my travel the whole time on my stories. And I booked like three things after that, just because people saw that I'd travel. Mm -hmm. And even now, like I travel a lot and still people will inquire and say like, do you travel? Which is totally okay. And I put in my bio that I travel. It says like traveling something, something. But I think showcasing that, I, I do think I say in my bio, I'm in Utah, but a lot of the times I'm all over the place. And so I think showing that you're, you're okay to go to Greece or you're okay to, obviously I'm okay to go to Greece. Like you want to show these things. And so I think that's really helped. Um, but also just, I think sometimes if I ever find inspo, like of a little Italian shoe, I'll put it on my story. Like, don't keep that to yourself. Like put it out there. Be like, look at this inspo. Like anyone want to go to Italy? Like put that out there and like showcase what you want. Like I always post inspo and a lot of my inspo is in Europe and I'm going to Europe in a week. And so it's like crazy, but I think just like showcasing that show that you're okay to travel. Um, and I think obviously your portfolio has a big thing to do with it. If you Mm -hmm. have photos, like if you, if people know you have the creativity and the knowledge to shoot, they're going to hire you to come on their trip or on their vacation or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really, really good advice. And it's cool because it's like worked for you. So you're like, actually just like, this is, this works. Cause I yeah. did it. So <laughs> I know. Um, okay. So the last question, what is a crazy story that you have from your photography career? Oh, I thought about You said this yesterday. I was like, I, I have this. Yes. Um, it happened the beginning of this year. I love going back and visiting Hawaii. I, when I lived there, I loved the waves. I loved swimming. Um, so I love doing like beach shoots and, uh, me and this, guy had been like had followed each other on Instagram for a long time and his girlfriend was on island so I was like let's shoot um so we were excited to like finally meet in person we met up they were the cutest people ever I was so excited we had like sent back and forth inspo a mood board so so excited for the shoot like I really was stoked 
was. <laughs> um, so we make our way on this beach and it's kind of like down a way. So we're walking on this coral, a coral, I don't even know, really rough rocks. And um, it was the same day as the eddy. So it was like the biggest the waves have been since I think 2016. Don't quote me on that. Okay. It was a really <laughs> big day for the waves. And this beach had never, like the waves don't even come up far and the day before I had gone to this beach and this walkway was completely cleared so like no water was on it I was like oh like completely safe didn't even cross my mind so I'm meeting them they're lovely we're walking down this kind of rock path I'd say it's probably like 20 feet wide and then it's the water and it's kind of a drop off into the water but the wa- the waves are like coming up a little and like splashing on our feet totally okay and I don't have a bag I'm just holding my camera around my neck and I'm holding my key, actually my friend's key because I borrowed her car, and my phone and a little basket of props. Super fun. He's holding a surfboard. She's holding like a little bag she had brought with her keys and stuff. Um, and we're just walking, having a really good conversation. And all I remember is looking <laughs> is he was like, oh, 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 oh watch out. And we looked <laughs> to the left. Oh, my gosh, Cassidy, a tidal wave. I'm not kidding you. Literal six foot wave had come up over the rocks and I was like so many things went through my mind in that moment. like I, I I'm not kidding like time stopped and I was like this is not real so, and okay so to preface on the other side of the waves there was a rock wall so we were about five feet from the rock wall so he was like oh, oh watch out so we like go to the rock wall to like think we can climb up in time Oh, I was not fast enough. <gasps> oh, it was just the worst thing ever. So I'm not kidding. I like I'm I'm a dramatic person normally, <laughs> but it, it was at least six feet. I'm not kidding. I hope the couple listens to this and can vouch for that. Like oh. it was huge. It literally. So they they made it to the rock wall. Oh. Me so so in awe at this wave, <laughs> turn to go for the rock wall, and I make it like one step, and my foot goes in between these two rocks. And the wave had just, like, already swept me out. Like, I was already, like, just, like, swimming, freaking, like, washing machine. I literally no. going back and forth, trying to keep my camera afloat. Mm. It's going deep diving with me. Like, it was the worst scenario ever. And I had put my foot in the rocks, and the wave kind of lifted me up, and it kind of really pulled on my leg. And I didn't notice this at the time. But for about 10 seconds, we were kind of like, I was... Honestly, it was more embarrassing for me because they made it to walk while I didn't. And so at least it wasn't like a paid shoot. It wasn't a real client. We were good friends. And so I literally was swimming around. My phone is probably 20 feet that way, keys that way, basket that way. It was a nightmare. Still had my camera around my neck. It's dripping. Oh, it it had gone underwater for at least 10 seconds. I finally climb up on the rocks and we literally just sat there for like two minutes. And we were like, wow, like what just happened? (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh, to make it even better, his surfboard, the wave took it. Oh, drilled the back of my head. Guys, it was so hard. I'm not kidding. I was like, there's no way I'm not concussed. Like, <laughs> what is this? Like, it was insane. And anyway, so we, like, climbed up, and we literally just, were, like, didn't talk for two minutes. We literally just, like, stared at the ground. We were, like, so shocked at what had just happened. Like, I was sad about my camera. I took my battery out and kind of was just, like, holding it. And we were just, like, talking. I was like, are you guys okay? Like, I'm so sorry. Like, I just felt, I felt like, really bad because I had put them in this situation. And they were like, oh, my gosh, we're totally fine. And she's like, are you okay? And she's, like, pointing down at my leg. And I'm like, dude, I'm fine. I look down. Oh, my shin. Just, like, missing, missing skin. Like, <gasps> eating everywhere. Like, there is, like, a ch- line of just chunk chunks of skin out of my leg. And I couldn't feel it because I was, like, <gasps> so in shock. And I was like, oh, like, oh gosh, like I didn't really notice that, but like I'm doing fine. Like I can't really feel it. She was the nicest person. She was a nurse. Like what are the odds? She like right. wrapped me up and I was like kind of getting a little like I'm going to pass out because this is kind of <laughs> making me sick. I knew my camera was shot. He was like so nice. He was like wiping it off. I ended up finding my keys in my phone. I ruined the car key. It definitely ruined the car key. My phone still worked and stuff, but like got the basket of stuff. So it, the dream of the shoot never happened, but no. I, yeah, it did. I didn't have to get stitches or anything. And I was terrified. I don't like getting, I've never broken anything. I, I just don't like going to the hospital and having to do that. And especially in Hawaii, just no offense to Hawaii, but I didn't really want to go get stitches. <laughs> and I remember getting back to the car and I was like, 
oh, after that, I was like, we can still shoe. And she was like, absolutely not. And I was like, so sad because I was so excited for the shoot. But we didn't end up shooting and we like went to the car and she was flying out the next day. So we couldn't shoot. But they're the sweetest and I'll shoot with them another time. But um, it was just so funny. They took good, such good care of me. And then I remember I like started to drive home and it was like a 15 minute drive home. And I, it was my leg that I was pushing on the gas with. And it just like kind of started to hurt. And I pulled over and I was like, I'm going to pass out. And so I remember I called my mom and I was like, had her call like who I was staying with. And I was like, I literally don't even think I can make it home. But I ended up making it back home. And they like thought I was, I like called them to tell them and they thought I was joking. So they came out and my whole, whole legs like wrapped in her overalls. Like what is going on? And so they were like, wait, this is actually serious. So they like helped me a lot and we like got medicine and stuff and I like wrapped it up and it hurt for a few days and I had to like cancel some shoots, but it was so funny. But, and then I like stuck my camera in rice in a big pot of rice thinking it would work. Oh, it never turned on. Like it broke. And so I brought like all new oh. gear. So that's what made me get the 24 to 70 is that's when I broke oh. my 35. But yeah, I, my camera went for a swim. I went for a deep dive. It was pretty funny, but we like laugh about it now. But like, I don't think like the seriousness of when it happened, it was insane. Like I thought we were dying. I thought we yeah. were just going to back into the water and we were going to be off the rocks. And it was like, it was actually really scary, but be careful on the beaches. Like it was insane. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, that is the craziest story. Yeah. Yeah. That is nuts and very dangerous. Like I'm just yeah. picturing a big tsunami just hitting you I and you tumbling in the water. Like, <laughs> no, I know. I'm like, if anybody had that on video, like that would be the funniest video. And I'm like, just so thankful they didn't get hurt. Like she got like a tiny little scrape on her, like right. thigh, whatever. But I was like, mm-hmm. I'll, like, I'll get her. I don't care. But oh, uh, it was funny. And I wish we could have had a video because we laugh about it now. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. Thank you for showing up with that story because oh, yeah. that 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 really oh, ended the episode perfectly. <laughs> okay, so I want to ask you before we peace out, where can everyone find and follow you? And also, do you have anything fun and exciting coming up that you want to let everyone know about? Yes. Um, wow. Um, fun and exciting. I'm going back on tour, which is so fun. I'm going to Europe in a few oh. days. I think you're going to Europe. Where are you going? I am. I'm going to Italy. I'm going to Italy. Where are you going? Shut up. I mean, I'm going to Rome. Are you going to Rome? Florence. Kind of close, I think. I don't really know. I do not know geography. (laughs) Okay. okay. Well, we'll have to talk about that because maybe. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about it. Okay. Um, But I don't know. I'm just super excited. I have lots of fun travels. Europe, probably Hawaii again later this year and then back on tour, which has been so much fun. Um, but yeah, I kind of, I'm just excited to see where it goes with everything. Um, if you have any questions throughout this podcast, like message me on Instagram, I'll totally like DM with lots, lots of you guys, excuse me. Also, thank you for having me. This was so fun. I'm glad we could of do course. this. Of course. Yeah. yeah. And I'll have your, um, Instagram and stuff linked in the description. So everyone yeah. can yeah. follow you there. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks again, Miles. This was so good. Thanks for traumatizing us with that story at the end. <laughs> If you get one thing out of that, I hope it's that story. Yes. (laughs) All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their day.